why am I here? <laughs> it's been a long journey. <clears throat> um, I am a mother, and this is my daughter. Um, I was like most of you out there wondering how to educate my child. I have two actually. And went through a lot of digging, struggling, trials, ups, downs, <clears throat> and um, the Lord has brought me through. And you can see the result, one of them, half of it. And, um, and that's the reward. The reward of being patient, persevering, and uh, most of all, keeping in view uh, our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. and the trials that he went through and his life. And that's our hope. Whenever uh, things become so uncertain, so dark, so difficult, we have someone to turn to. And uh, the counsel from the Bible, we also have the spirit of prophecy. We just keep going there and digging and digging some more and getting that reassurance that we're on the right road, on the right path. And I'm thankful for uh, young people like uh, Joshua White and Scott Ritzma and some of the others out there who are helping so many. I remember when um, I wanted to just blast this truth on true education. And uh, they do it so well. <laughs> I'm just so thankful uh, for them. And um, I pray for each one of you. You're the reason I'm here tonight so that I can share, because it's more blessed to give than to receive, um, but to share some of uh, what we have learned over the years. And the one who gives us success is Jesus. So keep hanging on to him. And don't try to copy us or man. Try to copy him. And we're here to share principles that we've learned, methods that we learned. And um, he's, though, the, the perfect one. So keep your eyes on him. And uh, hopefully we can share a little bit of him with you. What's the seminar called? Does anyone remember? Building for Eternity. We have a theme song that we're going to sing in the next couple days. Building for Eternity. Why are you here? Well, I'm here because God stopped me in my tracks years ago. There was a time in my life when my whole world fell apart. Everything that I found security and comfort in was stripped from me. And in the midst of emotional, physical, and spiritual pain, I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. Which way would I choose? Which way will you choose for your family? Second Chronicles 15. I hope you brought your Bibles to this conference because the next few days we're going to be teaching some academic subjects from the Bible. I love how God can be represented in every phase of our education. But one of my favorite scriptures is 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 4. 2 Chronicles 15 verse 4. No. Yes? Yes. But when they, in their what? Trouble. Trouble. Did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in that moment of my life when I was brought to a crossroads and I had to make a decision, because up until that point I had been fighting against God, fighting against every effort at true education that my mother was trying to implement in our home. But when they, in their trouble, didn't stay in their trouble, but they did what? 
they sought him, he was found of them. I love that promise. And I don't know what trouble you're facing. Maybe it's the simplest thing is, I don't know what to do with my children. If we seek him, we'll find him. That in, in essence is true education. How do we do it? Hopefully we'll find some ways of doing that in our home. But truly, we can claim the promise that in our trouble, if we'll seek him, we'll find him. And so I chose God's way for myself years ago. And I never would have thought that I would be here today doing what I'm doing. But is it worth it? Is it an easy road once you choose God's way? It's not always easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it. And so why am I here? I'm here because I found something worth sharing. And I pray that each one of you will catch a vision at the end of this seminar. That you can, even in your trouble, seek and find the answers. God has it. And he wants to give it to you. I want you to go from this seminar and build for eternity. A temple that the world may not see, as our theme song talks about. But we build for God alone. And years ago, as my mother was trying to do what was right and implement true education, no one understood and no one supported her. But she kept building because she was building for God alone, and that is worth it, even if you never see it in this life. At this time, I'm going to invite Dr. Mark up here. He's the, well, I'll let him tell you who he is. I'm that guy. Hello and welcome. I'm Mark Sandoval. I'm the president of Uchi Pines, and it's a pleasure to have each of you here with us. Um, president, medical director, but also father, husband. We have five children, one on the way, uh, so soon to be six, and um, uh, homeschooling and, and education is, uh, is an important topic. Uh, it's something that is needed. It is a work that is far beyond any other work. Um, you may have somebody that grows up to be a president, but the president will never have as much responsibility as a mother. Right? Never. And um, <clears throat> while, um, while there is... Uh, much debate in regards to the role of men and women nowadays, uh, God has ordained it that the most responsible role is a woman's role. And uh, unfortunately, it is one that is in the world least recognized, uh, least appreciated, um, and uh, is one that is thankless in many, many ways and many times. But recognize that God has called you to a noble deed and a noble purpose. Education is about restoring the likeness of Christ in humanity. Education and redemption are the same. <clears throat> and there is a law by which education works, and that is the law that by beholding, we become changed. And so if the purpose of education is to restore the likeness of God and man, and the law by which that happens is by beholding we become changed, then education must uphold Christ. The focus of it must be God. And hence the textbook is God's word. Right? And the world doesn't understand it. It doesn't. And if you find yourself outside of the, the norm, <laughs> if you find yourself a little bit extreme, uh, fundamental even, maybe, well, praise the Lord, because he is 
working out something in you and through you that you can't work out for yourselves. And be encouraged that through all of the bumps, the difficulties, the failures, I know, <laughs> God has not forsaken you. A, children lear- a child learns how to walk, and in that learning to walk process, they always fall down. And sometimes children, the parents are only big children. They're still learning how to walk, and they fall down in the process. It's not a problem to fall down. It's a problem to stay down. So when you fall down, get back up, right? And trust that God is there, Heavenly Father who loves you, holding out his hand, saying, come on, let's go. Let's go. Ever onward and upward. And so while we are here together for the next few hours, next few days, I pray that the Lord's Spirit may may be strong amongst us. And that he may call our hearts and minds up to something that is far greater than what we have thought for ourselves. Welcome to Uchi Pines and to your home away from home. Why are we here? It's the question we've been asking this evening. Question maybe you've been asking yourself since you got here this afternoon. But why are we really here in a broader sense? Why did God place us here? We talked uh, about how Jesus is our example. How he wants us to make us like him. So maybe we should be asking the question, why was Jesus here? I'd like you to turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah 61. Isaiah chapter 61. Jesus himself used this passage when he was in the synagogue. And he read this to specifically answer the question why he was here. Isaiah 61, starting in verse 1. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. So is that why Jesus came? To preach? It was part of it, but it didn't stop there, does it? It continues. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. But it doesn't stop there. To comfort all that mourn, To appoint unto them who mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. You know, as Jesus was reading those words long ago in that synagogue, before he sat down, he said, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. You know, I want to ask you tonight, if this is why Jesus was here, why are we here? What is our purpose? What is God asking us to do on this earth? Is it not to do the same? To comfort those who mourn. To give the oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. To brighten the lives of those around us. 
but to do more than that. It continues. That they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. What does that mean? What does it mean to be a tree of righteousness planted by the Lord? What picture does that bring to your mind? I know for me it brings to mind Psalm chapter 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, but his delight is in what? The law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And then he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. So what is God asking us to do? He wants us to be that tree by spending that time in his word. But it continues. And they shall build up the waste places. They shall repair the ruined cities. And you know, as I was reading those passages, as it continues on in this verse, it brought to mind one more text in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58. Why are we here? What, it, what purpose is our lives? What purpose are we training our children for? To what purpose is true education? Why are we here? Look at verse 12. God basically says, I want you to do what? Build up something. The old waste places. I want you to rebuild them. And you shall raise up the foundations of what? Many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the reach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. What are you doing here? Why are you here? Is it because this is who you want to be? Is this, is, is this because, is this the reason you're here? Because you want your children to be like this. We have a high and mighty calling, don't we? But it doesn't stop in just the Old Testament. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Why are we here? Matthew chapter 5. Verses 14 through 16. Matthew chapter 5, 14 through 16 says, Ye are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, so it gives light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. So if we just try hard enough, we can be the reason why we're here. Is that right? Can we? Can we just try hard enough? Like, it says that you are the light, so if I try hard enough to make my light brighter and brighter and still brighter... Does it work? Last time I tried to make my light brighter, I tripped and fell and it went out. Can any of you relate? The reason is because it's not our light. We are merely the moon reflecting that light from the sun. 
So why are you here? Why are you here today? What do you want to learn? And what is God asking you to do? You know, oftentimes, it's very easy for us as human beings to rely on methods. I'm here because I want to learn the magic curriculum that will get my kids to heaven. I'm here because I want to learn the magic methods of parenting, the magic methods of homeschooling that will guarantee my children success in this life and in the life to come. My friends... If that's why you're here, I pray that changes. Because methods will not work. There is no magic curriculum. It's God. It's Jesus. And he calls to us to be apprentices under him. He says, I am your teacher. If you will let me teach you, Together, we can reach your children. Work with me. If you don't know what to do, he's there waiting. You know, we, you will hear often throughout our uh, seminar about uh, curriculum by sunlight. And let me tell you. You can do everything exactly right. You can use only the sunlight curriculum and still be lost. It's not a curriculum. We're not here to promote a curriculum. We're here to promote Christ. And by apprenticing together with him, we can rebuild the old waste spaces of true education that is in shambles. We can become the restorer of paths and lead our children to Christ. We can fit our our children with Christ's help to be co-laborers with him so that together with them, we can share the light of Jesus with the world and that we may go home very soon. And hasten Christ's second coming. Why are you here? You know, as I was thinking about these verses in Matthew 5, about being the light of the world, it brought to mind a story. And I'm going to close with the story. There was a little girl many, many years ago who lived with her father in a lighthouse. This lighthouse was in a very nasty area where at low tide, the rocks were very shallow and no ship could cross. But at high tide, the ships could sail through the canal very smoothly. And the only way during the night that a ship would know where those rocks were was by that lighthouse. Well, there was a group of men who were very evil who also knew that, and wanted to do what they could to wreck the ship so that they could plunder the supplies on the boat. And so they waited for their opportunity, and as this little girl's father had to go to town to run some errands, they captured him, and they locked him in a little shed to await dark. As nightfall came, this little girl was the only one in the lighthouse And she saw it getting darker and darker, and she saw the water rising, and she knew that her father would not be able to get back until morning, because where he had crossed, the water now covered it. She also knew ships would be coming, and they would not know where the shoreline was, where they could go through safely. And so she began to search the lighthouse for a ladder, and she pulled the dining room table up, as far as she could under these high lamps, way up high, where she could not reach. And she put the ladder on top of the table and climbed to the top rung, but she still could not reach. And she began to search everywhere. There's got to be something else that I can put on this table 
to make the ladder just high, a little bit higher because she could almost reach it. And the only thing she could find in Lighthouse was a large family Bible. Well, she had been taught as a very good Christian, never put anything on top of the word of God. But as she prayed, she realized this was her only way to light those lamps. And so with a prayer, she set that family Bible on top of the ladder and once again stood on top and she was able to reach it. And she lit every single light in that lighthouse. Her father, locked up, tied up in the shed across the water, had been praying, God, please send somebody to light those lights. And as he saw the light beaming from the lighthouse, he knew God had answered his prayers. The ship was on its way and it was just about ready to hit the shore when all of a sudden it saw that light and was able to steer safely through. The wicked men who wanted to plunder the ship also saw that light and realized that their plans had been thwarted. My friends, why are you here? And how are you going to share God's light to the world? It's only by making the word of God our foundation, by planting our feet firmly on the word, by spending time in it, That's the only way that we can spread God's light to the rest of the world, to save the perishing souls who are about to shipwreck on the shore, to save our children before they shipwreck their lives by their choices and decisions. The word of God is quick and powerful, and it is worthy of a foundation in everything that we do in education. In closing, if you would humor me, I would like you to turn in your hymnals to a song. Number 518. Number 518. And as we sing this song, I hope you know why you are here now. Let's stand as we sing number 518, Standing on the Promises of God.
Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you so much for the privilege, the incredible privilege it is to have those promises that we can stand on as a guide, as a light in this dark and stormy world. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for the many blessings that you've poured out upon us today and safety and traveling here and, and, and many others that we know nothing of. And we ask your blessing upon our time here together. May you be lifted up, Jesus. May we learn more of you. May we draw closer to each other, closer to you, closer as families, closer to your ideal, and closer to your soon coming. We ask your blessing on our evening and our night of rest, and we ask in Jesus' name, amen.